we're going to talk about z-scores today and uh, they basically give us a framework for a lot of the statistical tests that we're going to use they're sort of a central concept uh, to statistics uh, sort of like verbs are to English or maybe the variable x is to algebra or maybe the periodic table is to uh, chemistry it's something that you really need to understand and so I'm going to try to do my best to to provide that information for you remember that this is on a video and then if you have problems understanding something you can listen to the video a second time or you can uh, back up and, and review something so uh, do your best to try to, to, to see what we're doing here so this is uh, the basic form the Z is going to be equal to X minus mu over sigma and this is going to represent the population mean and this is going to be the population standard deviation okay what we do a lot of times is we use the sample mean for our estimate of the population mean and we use the sample standard deviation sometimes we just use S uh, for our estimate of the population the uh, standard deviation now look at this what does this do this top part of this I get a different color here this normalizes it, the value for central tendency by subtracting off the mean if this value is equal to the mean you're going to get equal to the zero uh, so it's you know if you're above it it's going to be a positive value if you're below it it's going to be a negative value so this normalizes for the central tendency this by dividing by the standard deviation that normalizes it for the measure of variability for the spread okay so essentially if X was measured in inches then the mean would be married measured in inches so the top value here would be measured in inches and then if the standard deviation it would also be measured in inches the variance would be measured in inches squared so when I divide something measured by inches by something measured by inches then essentially Z is going to be something that we would call <coughs> unitless okay and by unitless we mean that it does not have any uh, an inch or foot or pounds or anything like that it doesn't have any units associated with it so let's look at some ideas some pictures of how uh, the, the distributions that we're working with and you're going to find out really quickly uh, first of all that I'm not an artist uh, I'll do my best but I'm not an artist so let's just assume that we have a distribution that looks something like this Okay. and then we have another distribution that you know maybe at, a, at a, a factory and this is a distribution of the parts uh, the length of the bolts or the weight of uh, the widgets or something like that at this particular plant this is produced by one and you see that it's a, a fairly tight distribution which means that there's a lot of consistency there almost all of the parts are in between these two but let's assume that we have another machine at the plant again I'm not a very good artist uh, this should, should not go down that far it should go stay above that line but the distribution of parts that it produces uh, looks like this assumes they both have the same mean 
but this one is going to have a greater variability. So it's going to be more difficult to make a prediction about where these parts fit into. Uh, you know, here you could say that the majority of them fit in between this point and this point. On this one, the majority of the parts probably go between here and here. That's a, gr a lot more variability, and so you wouldn't have as much confidence with it. So the, the z-score gives us some sort of measurement about how, uh, how far a particular part is away from the mean. So, you know, which one of these would you feel more comfortable with trying to make a prediction? Well, certainly the one that has a smaller variability, a smaller spread, has a less variance that would give you more confidence uh, than the other one. Um, so which one of these machines does the best job of producing consistent parts? A machine one or machine two? Well, machine two has a lot of variability. They're not very consistent. So a machine one would do a better job. Now, it is important to understand that the area under the curve for both of these is equal to one. Uh, the area under the blue curve is equal to one. The area under the red curve is equal to one. Uh, that's, uh, and the probability is equal to the area. Uh, so, a couple more facts about the z-scores or the distributions here. This is the percentage of the area under the curve of a normal distribution. This is a standard deviation. From here to here is one standard deviation. From here to here is one standard deviation. So within one standard deviation of the mean, with a normal curve, we have 68% of the area. 68% of the probability is there. Within two standard deviations, move out to this next set of lines, we have 95%. And within three standard deviations, we have 97.7%. Um, so that's just a, a, the, the idea of uh, how, that, how that, that's going to be used later on in the course. Okay.